Shakalaya. I am the Dene National Chief of the Dene Nation and Regional Chief of the Assembly of First Nation of Canada. I want to acknowledge this technology where we would talk to the world and welcome everybody this morning. I'm honored to address the United Nations session of the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous people. Thank you for inviting me. Today, I will speak to the recent events in Canada and the urgent need for accountability to support justice and healing for our people. The disturbing recoveries of the little ones at the former Indian residential school in recent weeks have pulled back the curtains on the genocide against our people and the dark shared history of Canada. The recoveries of the Kamloops and Cowson First Nation have shocked Canada and Canadians and opened fresh wounds for the First Nation people we have been speaking about this truth for generations. The Ascent First Nations have received outpouring support from across Canada and around the world. We thank these friends and allies for speaking up, for sharing their truth as we relive ours through our collective grief and pain over the recent weeks. There comes hope an opportunity for change, change that will bring justice and accountability for our losses and, and our stolen little ones and their families, and change that we will build a future where First Nation self-determination is respected in ways that allows us to thrive, standing proud in our cultures and our language. This work requires participation from all parties and will not happen overnight, but it must start now. The support of the United Nations, of course, plays an important role in keeping Canada accountable. First Nations Chiefs and Assembly passed a resolution last week demanding justice and accountability for the missing and unidentified children of the residential schools. Requiring action, we require action from all governments and the Catholic Church but by way of a papal apology that recognizes the various harms caused in the residential school system. A recent poll states that 93% of Canadians are aware of the recoveries of the former Kamloops Indian Residential School. However, only 10% of Canadians are familiar with the history of the residential school system. In order to see real and lasting change in our beautiful country, the shared history of Canada must be taught in schools to every single person that knows where we that will know where we come from and where we need to go together. As a survivor and an NA national chief, I know firsthand the destruction and the trauma of the Indian residential school system and the lasting impacts it has on our families and our nations today. The Indian residential school was a system designed to kill the Indian in the child and destroy our cultures. To this, the government of Canada worked in cooperation with religion organizations and the police services to implement this system right across Canada. The, the very person, the very people responsible for protecting its citizens has worked hard together and harmed us. Our children were taken from homes. Parents and families were to be taught the colonized way. <clears throat> there are there were several 
severe punishments to our children who spoke their language if it was sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and spiritual abuse, spiritual abuse that ran rapid. Many did not turn home. The system did not end in Canada until 1996. The genocidal approach of the residential school system have had a lasting impacts, documented and shared widely. In 2015, the release of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, 94 calls to action. Despite the courage of the survivors and the work of the TRC, much of the required action has been delayed or ignored. This lack of education and awareness of the system and its impact on all of us has resulted in racism and discrimination in many of the institutions in Canada, hurting relationships, building which is so important as you were to build a new future together. Many of the policies and the approaches of the residential schools system remain today in the child welfare system. Our children are still apprehended, even some at birth. Many are bounced from home to home for their entire childhood and, and, and to do not get the essential services and support they need when they reach the age of majority. Suicide and harm is a tragic reality along with the alcohol and drug abuse. Through strong advocacy grounded in our rights, First Nations made recent progress, including the passing of the federal legislation to reform the child welfare for First Nations, but so much work remains ahead. First Nations are also hopeful that the recent passing of Bill C-15, an act respecting the United Nations Declaration on Rights of Indigenous People, will usher in a new era of respect for the dignity, the self-determination, and the rights of First Nation people across Canada. Canada must act now we must act together with the indigenous peoples to implement this important legislation and take concrete actions to eliminate Canada's shameful colonized practice. And we say this for all humanity in the world as we have this morning to come together and we help each other under the guidance of God our Creator. Masi Chuo, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Chief Diane, for that very elaborate uh, contribution. We share your pain about the loss of the children lost in Canada. And we, we have you in our... Uh, the next speaker...